Oh, welcome to day two of the Cheltenham Festival. It was an action-packed day yesterday, and lots of thrills and spills. A couple of favourites being turned over, and one or two other hot pots coming in. So a little bit of everything. Some winds being shared out as well, and it was pretty good stuff. We've got an action-packed day for you again today. We've got an action-packed preview show as well, with more from Leon and Craig, and more from Josh. We've also got another look at some of James Shea's horses. Gray, I'll be looking at his horses for today as well. I'll be taking a look at some of mine, and we'll be looking in depth at two of the big races today the Ryanair Chase and the World Hurdle but first of all today Stu's going to take you through the races that he will be commentating on well after a cracking day's racing yesterday the 12 races shared between seven different trainers Leon is at the top of the board with three wins from yesterday but he's followed closely by by Craig Allen with two Paul O'Neill got a couple Josh also got a couple and that left hand night Daniel French and David Robertson to pick up a, a winner piece so looking forward to today with just eight races for the festival. And we start with the Fred Winter Juvenile Handicap, the four-year-olds. But it's a quite lowly rated handicap, this. So uh, some of the lower end horses are in here. A couple to really take a look at. Destiny Ruby for Graham Clutterbuck. Came second in the Juvenile Maiden way back on week two. Been tumbling down the weights ever since. Not really picked anything up. Conditions, been running on heavy, soft, good. So we couldn't say the ground's going to be to its liking but coming in here off of a very nice 86 that's probably got every chance a stable said it's its banker so uh, good luck with that one Graham there's a couple of others in here I quite like the look off Tyrian Sunshine but James Shea is going to go off of top weight but came second over the finish juvenile hurdle group one event back in week seven so coming in here off of 108 one off 90 way back in week five in the handicap hurdle. I think Tyrion Sunrise has got every chance in this one. And I don't think the top weight is going to inter interfere too much. Then just the last one is Montaplasi Redwood. And I've really picked this one. The fact that Martin Lidham's won it the last two seasons. This event comes in here with Montaplasi Redwood. Been uh, running quite well. Obviously won last, last week off of 70. Just uh, a novice's handicap hurdle gone up 20 pounds still might have a, a little bit in hand you'd have to go right back to week two to see him where he came fourth in uh, a juvenile hurdle really for any form but as the form horse of the day winning last time out just over slightly further but he'll uh, ha certainly have a shout in this race that moves me on to the JLT Golden Miller novices group one chase and we've got some really top horses in here. Volcanic Eruption, The Machine for Joshua Sutherland. Action Air for Tam King, whose form's dropped off a little bit of late in the last couple of races. And Go to Town for Leon Van Rensburg has won its last two. Going to go again. But Volcanic Eruption's obviously the multiple G1 winner in here. Has got every chance. Won last week at the City Isles. Go back to week six, one there. Week two, three and four also won so he's got all the form really coming into this though been beaten a couple of times um, creaking peak in for David Robertson won a handicap chase last time out been there or thereabouts never really done a great but one of those David Robertson horses that could be anything but Volcanic Eruption and the Machine they, they, they must be the two going into to this and they must be looking for a win for the two of them and then I'll move on to the Ryanair which we covered earlier and then we move on to the Brown Advisory Stable Plate Handicap Chase for me, which is over the two miles five, so G3 Handicap Chase. Not a great deal of form in here with a lot of people. I think the only one that really stands out, I think Teasel scores a winner last time for David Robertson. Actually won a Hunter's Chase last week. Been running in Hunter Chases, finally got the win. Um, steps up here into a Group 3 Handicap Chase. Well, they came eighth back in the Mackerson on week four. Just have a sneaky feeling that the weight might well be good for Teasel Scores. Coming in here for 111. You've got Alex Cherry's rear Corona is going to be the top weight. Rated 126. And his nearest is Moreland Overseer. Another David Robertson also for 122. So good luck to everyone in that. Then I'll be calling home the Kim Muir Challenge Handicap Chase. Another big handicap over three miles and a furlong. Again, not a lot of form to really look at. All of these horses have been running in... Uh, Lower rated events. Top of the pile is going to be Bel Gahira Jude for James Shea. His recent form hasn't been so good. He's going to be running off 123. He won off uh, Amore's Millions of uh, 
three miles and two furlongs back in week six off of 110 comes in here off of 123 and then he's got Mabutsa Norma of Jane Shea as well coming in off 120 but Mabutsa Norma's form is uh, pretty poor for a 120 raced horse in, in here hasn't shown anything since winning uh, the Duchess of Westminster handicap chase way back on week four off 103 he's not really tumbled down the weights particularly well here it's been there or thereabouts I'd have to say the handicapper hasn't been fair on this one he should probably be a little bit lighter for his poor form of late then we've got Josh Sutherland's Great White Hope maybe coming in here of 102 John's got one in here Grandeur on Pegasus for Paul Rhodes not much form difficult race to pick a winner out of I suppose if I really had to stick my neck out as usual as we have to and here's the last race of the day maybe I'll pick one heart paces for Craig Allen nothing much expected from this horse let's just see how it does I'll give it the kiss of stew it hasn't really done well it came second in uh, Moore's Millions way back on week six no form since then but they're the sort of horses that might just turn up here and take the win so uh, good luck in that one that's the last race of Cheltenham today we'll finish up with three hunter chases down to the final eight races tomorrow so good luck everybody today so james shane invited us around his stable then to have a look at his horses and this is what he's got lined up for day two in the fred winter which is the first race of the day he's got tyrrhenian sunshine and that was second in a group one juvenile race a couple of weeks ago so should be able to run a really big race or a racing of just 108 and james thinks that this is probably his second best chance of the festival of getting a winner i'll be amazed if he doesn't get at least one winner throughout the week so i'm going to keep a good eye on that one he's also in the same race got bullseye but that one has not really been hitting the target he's a little bit disappointed with the way it's been running but running off 82 it's got a, it's getting a lot of weight and it should have a chance and he's rather cheekily suggested that he might get a one two that would be a, that would be a bit of a coup there to get a one two in one of the Cheltenham festival races the per attempt handicap he's going to qualify there which had to qualify for this with the qualifying races earlier in the season and Bailey Plume has been running well earlier in the season and it's been actually saved and targeted for this race running in chases for the last few weeks to save its rating so that's a pointer in itself the ground will suit and this one looks like it's got a live chance in a race where a lot of them may not necessarily have been aimed for it they've just found themselves qualified so they might as well have a run so that one will a live chance in race number 17 the per attempts handicap final and then the big long distance hurdle race the three mile stairs hurdle well this one time he's got beachdale lola that one came third in a long walk hurdle a couple of weeks ago which is a group one so that's got to put this one into a bit of a ch give this one a little bit of a chance main concern here though is the ground because it likes it to be bottomless apparently and not quite sure how it will cope with the good ground but everyone we all says they always go at it at least once so you never know that's another one that we'll be having a close look at their beachdale lola with a bit of a chance the novices mayor's hurdle sabratha lady is according to james his best chance of a winner in the entire festival but a clear edge on the current form and even though it's a newcomer it's only been around since mid-season it's already won a group two although the ground isn't ideal it's a strong front running horse and james is pretty keen that she will make all the running and that one is his nap of the festival so you've heard the tip there it's and his final two runners of day two are in the Kim Muir and the top weight is in that race is Belgira Jude and that's one of one of James's horses it's, it's a slightly shorter trip than his ideal but it's already won a race this year and is fairly consistent it's not going to be too far away at the business end of the race the other one he's got in there is called Mebsuta Norma and he reckons that, that could be the worst jumper in the legs it's failed to complete five of its seven chase starts this year however it won one of the others when managing to get around so a chance if it saw how manages to stand up and it's not beyond the realms of possibility because we've seen plenty of horses come to the Cheltenham festival with dodgy jumping records and somehow managed to just get it all right on the day so it doesn't appear as though any of his horses on day two are completely forlorn hopes so we'll watch them carefully and hopefully you'll have a good day
So, day two, the first big race on day two is the Ryanair Chase, two mile five furlongs. We've got another couple of hot pots for both Josh and Leon in this. What do you fancy, Greg? Well, I'm going to go for different horse altogether. I'm going to go for Darren Thompson's Insa, is it so Brebe? Brebe? Yeah, Insa. Second one down. Insa. 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 I think it's Ancestor of Barbara is what I should be calling it, but I'm not commentating on this. This is going to be um, one of yours, Stu, so what are you going to call it? Yeah, I will call it Ancestor of Barbara. There you go. It's, I, I, it's come up a few times before. It's hard. I wish sometimes the guys would post and say, no, mate, it's supposed to sound like this. That would be really helpful. Because mm. um, obviously some of them you just think, and obviously it's hard because obviously you see the word and sometimes, I'm not saying we're all dyslexic, but sometimes you see it and you'll drop a letter. It's a bit like Elsie. Poppy, yeah. mm. Poppy Elsie, I work this for you, Martin, for mm. some reason. Yeah, you call it Poppy Elsie, don't you? It's Poppy Elise, really. Yeah, I know. It's um, just, I think it's just when you first see it, and obviously so much going on, and the hunt and the speed you have to commentate at. Yeah. You see, <laughs> the, the, the thing with, with, with all this commentating, like, stuff that I've, that I've tried to say to people in the past about the names, sometimes it's not the ones that look so bad on paper it's the way the words flow like for instance once you've decided how you're going to say that ain't it Barbara it's easy once you've decided how you're going to say Zomaradarala rap that's easy as well it's the ones that don't flow that have a problem now one of the ones I have a problem with is one of yours Grey and you've got one called Ella of a Dame now that's just an awkward phrase to say quickly because you want to go Ella of a Dame and you don't want to do the over in the, in the middle uh, Grace horse, the one that uh, go, 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 go. Mm, yeah, you don't know how many do, do, do's to do, do you? How many yeah, I, I do, I go, do, 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 do. Yeah. Uh, I do, I do, I do, I do. It's, it's an Arbor song, that's why it's like that. That's why it's called like that. Because it was named after the Arbor song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, I, hope, I hope that's running. What song about Abba? I do, I do, I do. That's what it's called. I do, I do, I do. Uh, okay, was it a hit? Um, it wasn't a big hit, but I like, I like the song, so you know. It's a big I like enough, Abba, so. It was a big enough hit for somebody to have heard of it, Steve. I've heard of it. Oh. Yeah, no, I didn't know if it was just one of those non-TB side songs on something good like Money, Money, Money or something like that. But that's okay, sorry. Well, they probably wrote that on the same day because they were like having a thing where they couldn't think up many words so they but, just did I do, I do, I do, I do followed by Money, Money, Money followed by Voulez Vu. Voulez. Well, I do, I do, I do was born the same time as Annie Annie who runs in the stage because they both have a songs. Okay. Oh, I have well. a... I, I, there is a theme with my names. <laughs> Yeah, no, there appears, there appears to be. <laughs> now you've told us. If you can be side songs, no one's ever going to get that theme. It's, I mean, I like the fact that people have got some, 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 some weird names. It's just sometimes I would like it if people practiced saying them out loud a few times because some of them just don't roll off the tongue well and some some do and I'm just bad for some of mine as well it's um if you try and make something different because the, th the thing that I've noticed a lot this year is that a lot of people haven't bothered changing the name of the horse and what it was from its generated name um probably because they didn't think it was going to be good enough to get into the league probably um I've got a horse called Capable Cardington that runs over jumps and Ryan Costello's got a Capable Cardington that runs on the flat We've got two Belladonnas. We've got two uh, Blooming Chasers. We've got, we've got lots of names that are the, the same this year. That a lot of people haven't to know it's because fortunately they're on them. Um, they're not coming up against each other. Um, I have no sense. There's not many one-word names. I find when people name their horses, there always seems to be two two words or maybe three. But there's not. You don't get many. I mean. Funny enough, when we look at this right here, Chase, there's two horses, but only two horses. The rest of you don't get one name. That's because they're not the, just called Apollo. The, uh, they're not just called Kingman. The game doesn't generate one name, one, one name horses automatically. So if, if they're not changing it, it's it's always going to have two or three words. Oh, uh, okay. Um, which is something that... I think even if people write their own names, they tend to also go more than just that one word. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. A lot of people pick things that they like, don't they? I mean, Kevin Meenahan's got a lot of references to old comedy programs lots of people use songs and films and paul rose used to have his fetish with newsreaders and lady please women <laughs> um, i'm sure he still has that fetish <laughs> he probably does he's just keeping quiet about it these days <laughs> and um and yeah and some people just like to have really i mean some of leon's names are pretty interesting um darren thompson's are always a mouthful as well but it, it yeah, always has a bit of a spanish flavor or dt hmm. it does it does it does make it uh, it does make it interesting there but sometimes it's not the uh, it's not the ones that look hard to say that are the problem it's the ones that the the 
they just don't they don't just it's like D- Derek Hinton's got one called Fiddler's Woman's uh, that, that's oh, yeah. it's, that's uh, too many if it, was, if it was Fiddler's Woman it would it would flow better than Fiddler's Woman's it, it sounds silly but when you're saying it 25 times in 3 minutes it's, it doesn't help the flow of things if, if you know what I mean but I'm probably just talking like a musician I suppose aren't I? and they said well he went quiet there well that's because we were ready to talk <laughs> <laughs> Um, now a conitum like now that's a tricky one thank you Gray yeah because that's supposed to be a... the word a conitum sure it's aconite uh, isn't it I, I, I didn't name that one I just left I didn't think it'd be good all so <laughs> <laughs> you see I think that's aconitum isn't it not a conitum that's right I go aconitum like aconitum yeah you see that flows better oh see aconitum like okay I'll still get it wrong yeah now it's what's a... the other one you got skitler I like that horse Linford skitler Lin- Linford skitler yeah good no, I named that one yeah mm. Yeah, no, that's a good name. Was that named I used to be after... Skittles, Skittles years ago when I was younger. What, like Champion? Champion. Yeah, like Champion of Skittles, like. Well, I wasn't very good at it, but you know. <laughs> oh, okay, so you weren't a champion. I didn't know if you were like... No, you know... I played Skittles for, for a little club, like, you know. Is there such a thing as a club for Skittles? <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. You see, there's two or what three. What do you do? use? Wooden balls. Wooden. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are you right. talking about the wooden ball variety, right? or the ones where you throw wooden, cheeses? But the, you know. Oh, well, the balls are not wooden. No. Okay. Is yeah. it not just bowling? It was on a skit lally. I want a skit lally. Well, well, you see, the version okay. that we've got it where where, where I am, which I, I used to play. Oh, is, you know the it's, it's inside, and it's got a big table, and you, you throw cheeses at, a, at some pegs, and you play it in the oh, pool. Don't be saying this out to people like Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You throw, <laughs> you throw uh, plastic cheeses at, or wax cheeses at um, at little peg things. You play in a pub. I was in the, I was in a league team once. I got transferred for major amounts of money because I was so good. Get away! <laughs> no, it's true. I'll post you a photograph. <laughs> but anyway, getting you back. Have to, tellies. <laughs> It's you don't have tellies. Yeah, we do. You, you, it's, it's it's a pub game. It's like pool and darts and skittles. It's, okay. There's not many, not many places left where they do it. They still do it in Northamptonshire, a bit of Warwickshire, uh, maybe a little bit into the north, maybe. But it's a thing around here, mostly. People turn up in the days when the pubs were open and they go in the pub and they see one and they go, oh, what's that? And you teach them how to play it and it's it's good. Okay. So anyway, the Ryanair chase then, so we've decided that... Who's got some... Ain't this a bra bra? That's for the grey. That's mate. Yes, that's great. I'm going to go I'm gonna go for the same one. Okay. Well, what about you, I, Steve? Well, I, I like that horse as well. I mean, he's very unfortunate. Though I'm seeing last time out, I'm not sure if that was the only time it hadn't finished, looking back through it. Yeah, no, I mean, because it's only been quite successful since since the turn. It's only that one, two, one's back the best uh, first, second and first it's had all season. So no, maybe we'll look somewhere else. I mean, I've, I've not, funny enough, I can't have done too many two mile five commentaries because I don't know footprints and I don't know matching, matching goity. Mm-hmm, so I'll call it. I haven't come across those horses, nor have I come, uh, nor have I ever come take on floats like a summer fly, uh, um, which is really cool, name. Um, but no, but let's go, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, now I'm just going to throw one in here in the nick of time for Josh Sutherland, one with the poorest things, that will be where Close Flag Summer Fly will run off and in the nick of time we'll get there in the nick of time right okay well, I've got to be excruciatingly boring because I've commentated on floats like a summer fly a lot, and it um, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty good horse. And every time it's been beaten, it's been unlucky. So I think that'll win. Match and Goidy is the big danger, which isn't too much of a clever thing to say. But Leon reckons that's been running over too short a trip most of the time, and the extra little bit will uh, will will do it good. But that floats like a summer fly comes back when it's challenged. So I think that it's going to be another another Josh and Leon battle up the hill, and I think that Josh is just going to win it this time. And that leads us in perfectly to the second part of the interview that I've done with Joshua Sutherland. Right, second day of Cheltenham Festival and the second part of the interview with champion trainer Joshua Sutherland. How are you doing today? Yeah, very well. Nice to be back. And good. Um, so before we go into day two's racing, then we had a really interesting conversation yesterday about how you progressed through the ranks to be the champion and everything what what was going through your head when everybody was sort of saying right we can't wait for so 7 to start and you suddenly got to a level where you're at the top of the tree in six and you know all that effort and work that you've done is now going to be worthless and you've got to start again or, or, <laughs> what did you think about that I think, oh bugger i think was the, <laughs> the opening for um no, I, I i i kind of knew it was coming i I accept the game had to move on and there was always going to be a new version it was a little bit frustrating 
but then in some respects, I think for the benefit of the league, it needed to happen. I think as nice as it was to be at the top, as nice as it was to, you know, clean up races and, and sort of go into things going, well, as long as it stands up, I'm going to win that. Mm. And when I started to pick up flat wins as well, and having gone from the point where I didn't win and couldn't get close to winning and, and the frustration that comes with that, I kind of did understand the game needed to reset. But yeah, it was a it was a lot of work down the swan. Mm. And I think I had some some early early phase tantrums. In fact, when I started seven, uh, I didn't like it at all. I, well, I was... didn't like the interface. I didn't like the things that changed. There were sort of subtle changes, particularly on manual training bits that were a little bit different that just became a frustration. Mm. Um, oh. And I, I didn't really start it in anger until... Um, the first set of exhibitions when it was Lee Courses own. Mm -hmm. And that was when I, in prep for them, I'd probably squizzed for about 10 or 15 seasons. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was going to get on onto that in a minute because I think it's probably fair to say you were the sort of most vocally anti SO7 at the beginning, weren't you? Because you just didn't like it at all, did you? It was sort of. I, I, I didn't like it one bit. No, I, I didn't mind the league mode, and I didn't mind the removal of the bars. I think I was just. I think it's probably a combination of yes, walked away from something that had worked quite hard to get to. But I, there were there were bits on the interface I don't like. There's still something today. They have that. I don't even know if you have it on on auto training, but there's a little eye button um, on the end of the horse file that mm. allows you to look at information. That's it. Yeah. In in six, that used to be like a tooltip hover that you yeah. could just hover the cursor over um, and basically see uh, that that horse information. And all I used to do is with a roller mouse, mm. when they're all fully fit, I just used to roll down and look for things like breathing issues. Mm -hmm. And because that doesn't always show, so you might have also a breathing issue and you could look at it six times, but you only see the breathing issue indicator once. I used to just roll up and down with the roller mouse on the I button to look to see if there was anything mm. I needed to do. Now it's a click. It's a pain in the ass, basically. <laughs> Particularly when you've got 300 horses. You yeah. have click, 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 click. So there were bits just on the interface that I just didn't like. And it took a little bit of time to play and just, I suppose, refine my approach. Because also, losing the tiff and the, the you know, John's very much right when he turns around and says, you have if you're a trainer, have an approach, figure out what works for you and stick to it. Mm. And I think that's really important. And I, I'd lost that approach. I couldn't do it anymore because the, the way the game had changed. Um, so it took a little bit of time for me to decide I actually wanted to, to stand up on SO7. I'd mm. like to, for a period I wasn't going to play it. I thought, you know so, what, I'm, I'm just going to throw my toys out and not play it. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it that changed your mind? And what was the, when was the point when you suddenly thought, no, I, I was the champion at this blooming thing, I'm going to go and, I'm going to go and get, get good at it again? I think when they announced the, the league-only exhibitions, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'm going to just I'm going to just get some horses ready for that, just so I have an idea of where I am or where I can get to. And I think I probably had about... I don't know, 15, 20 seasons in my hunt game by then, uh, and less on my flat game. My flat horses, I think, were annihilated, but my hunt horses did okay. I think I had a couple of seconds and thirds, and I actually think I may have won one of the latter races, actually, with, with a horse that ended up in the league team. So that gave me enough to go, you know what, actually, with a little bit of time and impetus, I can probably I can probably crack this. So, <laughs> so it was probably those exhibitions that I went from not playing it, not really that interested and not that infused to put the work in, plus having a small baby at the time changes priorities a little yeah, bit. Yeah, because I mean, this does tend to suck you in this game, doesn't it? And you sort of it, it, sit it there does, and do it yeah. and you suddenly think, oh, crocky, it's got dark and I haven't done anything else for about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I don't have, I, I have to steal the time I, I play it. So it tends to be, you know, if I'm travelling for work, obviously not so much with the furloughs, but... Mm. It's, it's an hour on the train in the morning, it's an hour on the train in the afternoon, it's an hour at lunch. I tend to steal time mm. because I can't play like I'm a bachelor anymore, basically, <laughs> and turn it on in the morning and turn it up at the end of the day. <laughs> Um, but in some respects, I think seven probably is better for that because it really is just one horse. You know, one lucky horse that turns up 
and you're like, hello, that's going to completely change my it, entire. It does, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Um, as, as though that might be, might be what's, what's what's sort of going to happen. The other thing that was the sort of interesting in the beginning, I'm fair to say, the last few seasons of SO6, you and you and Paul were just like going head to head over both codes, weren't you? Um, yeah, I think I think we pushed each other to a degree. He certainly pushed me initially to to do the work to catch up. Well, I think the thing and is, a... I I think I then pushed him on certainly on the hunt side because mm. I think he was like, hang on, there's a there's a level above where I am I can get to. Well, I think the thing uh, that's so... a, that surprised us with the, the commentators side of it was when we started this SO7, you really struggled at the beginning on the flat, didn't you? But you were doing okay on the jumps. And Paul did it exactly the opposite way around. I mean, looking at some of these races at Cheltenham, I mean, normally we'll be talking about the, what chances Paul's horse have got of winning. And basically, he's, he's, he's down in, in the... He's, he's down at the same level as, as me, really. And, and, and he's not he's not in the big races. And it's it's almost like a flip-flop thing, isn't it? Whereas he struggled on the, on the jumps. On, he's, yeah, he struggled on the jumps and you struggled on the flat. I think it's where your energies go. Uh, you know, I my my hunt game is on about fifty five seasons. I, I think at the moment my flat game is on forty, but the difference in scale between the two is massive. My my flat game, I think I've got ten in stud, and I've maybe got sixty or seventy breeding mares, and I tend to just click through pretty quickly and breed. and I, And I've started getting some better horses. Um, you know, Belladonna was, I think, a bit of a fluke. Um, I've got a horse going in the ledger this week who I actually think is really good. It's done nothing in the league so far, but I actually think it's a, it's it trials like an absolute god. Um, so I think my flat team is getting there, but I don't put the time and energy in. Compare that to the the, the NH training, I've got 40 stud horses now in the hunt and I've got 350 mares in the barn. So I'm doing 350 horses a, each year. After the cull, that tends to come down to 100. A second breed drops in, which puts me close to the limit. That culls down again and then a third cycle goes in. And after cull, I end up with sort of 300 horses that then get braced and trained and, and exported and trialled. And that's kind of how I, I manage the, the cycle. My, so for me, it's scale. I'm sure if you spoke to Paul, the time he spends on flat is much more than the time he spends on hunt. Mm. And for me, it's, it's, it's vice versa. So is, is, the, is your sort of main focus at the end of this season for next season going to be on improving your jumpers so that you get past Leon? Or is it going to be getting your flat stable up to, up to scratch so that you, so that you can competing right at the top of the flat as well at, at the moment it's all on hunt uh, you know um so leon is is light years ahead of me i know the the table doesn't suggest it but I, you know a good cheltenham for me will be five winners re- reasonably five or six winners i think a good cheltenham for him will be 10 um and i i expect him to absolutely own this year because what Cheltenham always does in this game is it's because there's so many g1s there and so many even races it really does show who's the best trainer Hmm. So I, I think Leon will own Cheltenham, uh, and I think realistically he's a long way ahead of me. And I think it's it's more when you look at the ages of his horses. So if his horses mature in the same way mine do, they'll peak at eight. Most of his league team are six and seven. So I think organically, just by having an older version in his export files, he's going to just naturally bring on horses that will go two or three lengths better than they do now just mm. because of the age so gi joe is seven i think will come back next year better well so yeah, I, mean, I, I, think, I can, I can tell you he will because I've, well, I've, I've, so we've, we've, I've spoken to leon as well and he said that he did all his trial and everything before they changed the kit so that you could race a horse against itself at different ages and quite a few of the ones he's got in at the moment are better at older ages than they're in at so yes yeah, it's, yeah. So I so I recognise that. So I, I know he's going to have both new horses that he brings through and ages properly, and returning horses that. So so most of my time at the moment is on hunt. Pretty much my entire mm. team in the league now are gone. None of them make the monster. Just about hangs around at nine. I think she's now third in the pecking order. But my enti- all my two four hurdlers are gone. Lana Del Rey long gone. Uh, all of my two four chasers are gone. The machine, I think, just about hangs around on trial. That's sixth or seventh. 
All right, so how do, you, how do you do that then? With the, do you like trial every sort of year and then just get rid of the ones that, that, that are not in the top half dozen or something? Because I know a lot of people, once they've had a horse in the league that's won a couple of races, they, they, they keep it there all the time and get rid of them and, that, I, and that's I, it. I do a mass trial every three years. So each trial has the horses that survived the last one plus three more breeding generation. Um, I do races of 21 horses per trial. I drop everything from 10 below i so i run three races basically any horse that features in the bottom 10 three times instantly goes and then i put new horses in and just rinse and repeat that mm-hmm. cycle until i end up with about 15 i then probably run about 50 trials uh with that 15 mm-hmm. and then they get a score so they get an x on a piece of paper if they win it and they get a little line if they come second or third mm-hmm. and then i just build up who the horses are i then go and look at the export bin I get rid of anything that's not on the trial sheets anymore. And then I repeat that process in the breeding for the most part. There's mm. some some horses, mares I tend to keep. But the, the colts, if they fall off the trial sheets, they fall out of the breeding bar. Oh, okay. So you don't get sentimentally attached to them and can keep them and just do them one a few races in the league then? Which I'm not, not, in the, <laughs> not in the slightest, no. So, I mean, so floats like a summer fly actually is an example who's still in the the breeding barn but he hasn't bred with a horse for probably two or three years Mm. because he doesn't stay on the trial sheets anymore so he he spends most of his time in the field i only keep him if i want to do an out and out front runner right because he because he can be a front runner breed so if i want to but i'm I'm sort of breeding away from front runners at the moment i didn't do it deliberately it just happened organically um but i found now that i'm breeding more i'm getting horses that run differently which i want i I, I don't really want a whole barn full of front runners i think as people get better the front runners will be more exposed yeah i think i think you're probably right i know i know already one of the things that you like best about so7 and that's the fact that the pull-up kit has been sorted out and we don't get to we don't get horses that are in the lead pulling up anymore yeah and that's a that's a good change as well because that was incredibly frustrating because it used to be g1 horses that did it sometimes you'd be like oh there we go <laughs> there goes my child and he's just pulled out for no particular reason whatsoever yeah, it, used to, it used to be quite annoying that but uh, the other thing i've noticed with, with the British, do, you, do, you, do you think there are more fallers now i mean i know you do your your training different so you're probably not getting as many but i'm noticing a lot more horses falling especially when they're in the lead than, than, than they used to i yeah, maybe. I, I I don't know whether he's offset the the pull ups with a fall up thing, or whether it is that training has become more important. I mean, I haven't noticed it. I don't. I don't think I've had a lot of fallers. I've had a few horses that have gone a couple of times, but some of my team haven't fallen at all. Uh, and I do wonder if that is because I can manually train jumping, uh, unlike everybody else. Um, but I, I don't think I've noticed a, a massive. Increase in force. Yeah, well, I, 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 I dare say it depends how you, how you how you sort of watch the races if you only watch the ones that you're in or or, or whatever. But we, we certainly noticed, noticed it as, as, as commentators that there do seem to be more crashing unexpected falls this uh, this season, which is good because it, it makes it uh, it makes it more exciting. Unless it happens to be one of yours that's falling, of course, and then it's not quite so exciting. <laughs> not yeah, it does. <laughs> it, the science in it would be interesting. Whether there, you know, I think there might be something in this small build thing that that Leon talks to. Um, oh yeah, I mean yeah. John Morgan's the example for that, isn't he? Because I mean he normally does really well on jumping, but most of his horses just keep falling over. Yeah, and, he's, is... he, and from what he says, he's small build and auto training, so that maybe there is something in that. I mean, I'm I'm at the moment trying to build a large build string. I'm, I'm kind of probably two or three generations in it. I found some random large build horse in stud who happened to be crap, and I'm slowly and painstakingly trying to improve that um to get a large build um national horse <laughs> is my plan i want to can i find a large build national horse and of course name it party politics so um so this is the the i'm trying to test that theory uh, as the weather build actually does make a difference particularly around chasers but pretty much all of my horses all those 300 odd mares and the stud nearly all of them average build I, I, I think it probably does make a difference because if you if you look in the uh, you look at the legends there's a thing in, in, in it's a legends editor where you can actually go in and you can make your own legend you can't use them in the league not but you can actually see how the legend horses are made up and, and it gives you a bit of an idea of some things that you can be looking at 
there's only, as far as I can remember, unless they've changed it, there was only one small build legend. Right, okay. And that was Easter Bracket was a hurdler. Right, okay. So, yeah, which was sound to reason again, you so, know, if, if you are going to have a small build horse, mm. they, it will be over the smaller obstacles. Yeah. So, you know, there's probably lots of little things under the hood, as they say, that, that, that we don't really know about. So, talking about that, then what about day two of Cheltenham? What's, what's, what's your, um, what are your main, main chances uh, day today? Day two is going to be harder for me, I think. JLT is probably one option. I think I've got a decent shout with a machine in the Golden Miller. He hasn't run as I had expected so far. I mean, he won his, he, so he was an upload horse. He won his, uh, first race and he's come second since but he's run in a style that i don't recognize from trial but uh, i think i've got a decent chance in the jlt he'll be there or thereabouts uh, i think ryanair is probably my best chance on the day i think either floats like a summer fly uh, or imagine Godi for leon will be the two to watch i'd like to see in the nick of time do well because actually on trial form that's my best horse uh, and I only trial at Cheltenham, and I only trial at 2.5 for that range of horse. So according to the trial, he's my best horse, mm. but I think on form, Summerfly and or, or Imagine Godi, I think will be the two to watch. After that, I think I'm in with a squeak on the stayers, but it's hard to oppose either night and day and lateral thinking. Mm. Um, but I think full court press might be there or thereabouts, and that's really my lot. I, I don't have any particularly high hopes in the trial house, um, and I don't have particularly high hopes in the King Mir and the other two I've got runners in so the Ryanair for me is probably the, the best shout and the JLT is probably my second best option okay. I think on that day Okay, well, hopefully uh, you'll have a, have, a, have a good day and um, we'll see how they see how they go later on Welcome back to day two for the Pontypool Race and Stable Tour um, Race 13 is a Fred Winter Juvenile Handicap title. I have Destiny Ruby in this race I think he's got a good chance it's been a bit disappointing lately. It won last week in the Imperial Cup. Um, well, up its death, a four year old, back into his, his age group, will have a good chance. A good each way chance, at least. Race 14, the bumper, I go on active and like in this, but I, I'm not very. I don't, well, I don't think you'll actually win, although I, I think you'll have place up for grabs in that one. Race 15, the novices chase the JTL Golden Miller. I don't have one in that race. Good luck to the guys that do. 16, the Potemps Network Handicap Panel. A regional Sunny and Flaky Dovecott. If, if it was level weights, regional Sunny would definitely win, beat my second strip. But at the weights, Flaky Dovecott got out a good each way chance. I'm expecting a good one from both of those horses. The Ryanair, I have two chases in it, Bobby Excel. Um, Belmore Store is now steps down from three to two miles five. Um, Belmore Store will probably make the one in Bobby Excel if it, but this yes, is such a good race. Um, so, oh, just hope one will get in the first three. Um, the Sun Bet Stairs Hurdle, race 18. Um, honey Honey, still a maiden, but you know, she's 140. She's not She's not back, back numbers, just, it's just that this uh, three mile hurdle class. It's just a bit too powerful, for her, really, and uh, if it gets placed, that'd be a good one. Race 19, the Bell's Anniversary Stable Handicap Chase. I, I don't have a money in that one. 20 is the Trial Health, again, no money in that one. And 21, the last one on day two, the Kim Muir. I have Amazing Yourself, um, a novice into Handicap Company. Um, jumping's a bit iffy. But it's, it's, it's not that good a horse. I think he's given too much to the bottom lot. And uh, I expect one of the outsiders and one of the low weights to win that one. So day two, not looking very good for us. I hopefully may grab a Potemps Network and maybe the Fred Winter for Pontypool Racing. World Hurdle or the Stayers Hurdle, whatever we want to call it. I don't think we better call it the Sunbet Stayers Hurdle because most people don't like the sun anymore for obvious reasons. Thing shining up in the sky. No, the um, Uncle Rupert. <laughs> uh, the newspaper that's not sold in Liverpool anymore. Is it not? No. Oh, I must look at no, that. No, I'll have it in Liverpool. You can't buy a copy of the sun in Liverpool anywhere. I never knew that. 
after what uh, after what they did about Hillsborough and all that sort of stuff. And um, this week, I think they stooped to the lowest ever, didn't they, by giving the front page headlines to congratulating somebody for beating his girlfriend up. So still get the most. Yeah. Still get three million people buy that every day. Can you believe it? Probably says a lot more about the three million people that buy it than it does about the paper. But anyway, I think we've had enough, con- enough controversial <laughs> enough controversial statements for one day, haven't we? So. Um, Right, Stas, who are we? We'll just keep that one in You don't want to say things like that about people like that, Steve. She might put a spell on you because she knows she knows all them wizards. Mm. <laughs> don't put that in either. No, I don't, don't put that in. No, I, I've met her. She's lovely. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, and how did, how, how did you manage to meet her? Don't worry, I'll edit this to make it sound presentable. But how did, how did you manage to meet her? Did you enter a competition saying, if I had Harry Potter's cloak, I would... No, the, like I said, the business I had in Edinburgh, it was, um, we supplied catering staff. So obviously I used to go to a lot of big events um, up in Edinburgh and everything. And because obviously what you do, I would turn up and count staff, make sure they're properly dressed, all that kind of stuff. And because you get to know the hotels and, you know, Murrayfield and all that kind of stuff, mm. I just, she just happened to be coming in at the same time I was there with the, with the chief guy and just got introduced to her and everything. And now we have not- a... The minute, and it was early days, it would have only been after the first or second movie. I'm not even sure if the first movie had come out at that time, so we're talking quite a long time ago. Oh, okay. In Edinburgh, she was a bit like, oh, everybody was like, oh my God, she's a god and everything. So we've, we've, we've discovered one thing today, anyway, now. What? We've, dis- <laughs> <laughs> we've discovered how you know how to spell Edinburgh. Well, yeah, no, well, if you remember when you first interviewed <laughs> Martin, I probably would have told you. Yeah, you well, probably I've did, but I've from Edinburgh. had lots of conversations with lots of different people about lots of different things since then. I can't remember everything about everything. Oh, well, that's just not good enough. I thought I was, we, we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> Heartbroken, I am. At least I knew what day your birthday was. All right, well, neither did. Well, sorry, if you look at the WhatsApp where Doug says, oh, happy birthday, and you talk about it like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to think it was the day after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right, let's get back to this. Um, let's get back to this race. And I suppose, considering we've just yep. had a conversation about what, what, you, what you've just had a conversation about, you're going to pick Josh's in this. I am. I think well, I just, it just happened to flow into that. Now I think the White Witch will take it. I like figures that go two one two. It's going to be a one next. Um, and also, he's got a phenomenal record in this. I mean, he's won the last three seasons. All right, albeit SO six. And obviously, Leon has come in here and obviously upset Josh is up that part a little bit. But now I'm 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 happy to go with the White Witch. Otherwise, that is JK Rowling. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, Ray? Is that me? Yeah. All oh, right. Um, well, I'm not going to go for the White Witch. Um, I think Josh Adler will have a better chance, but I'm going to go for, yeah, I'm going to go for Leon's Night and Day. Leon yeah. Rating's got a good chance, so I, I'll, I'll go with that one, Night and Day. Okay. What about you, Doug? Uh, yeah, I'll go with that one as well, Night and Day. Yeah. What are you doing? It's one, one group one, one group two hurdle. I don't know, you all think that's going to be any good. No, sorry, don't mean to be complaining. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're all wrong. Well, I haven't said what I'm going for yet. How do you know I'm going to be wrong? Well, no, OK, you, 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 well, of course you wouldn't be wrong. You well, I probably, I probably you will. will. Correct. I probably will be wrong, oh. and um, I, I, I'm, I'm coming down on the side of you, so you better hope I'm not wrong, because I think the White Witcher would as well. Man. <laughs> Our friendship is back on. <laughs> Uh, jolly good. <laughs> oh, now that doesn't sound very right. <laughs> well, I didn't think it was ever off in the first place. I'm not quite as fickle as you. I'm sort of. No, that's because you laugh in the Midlands, mate. You have to hang on to all your friends you can. Us <laughs> people We can be a bit more picky. <laughs> well, that is true. Okay, day two of Cheltenham then, and I've got um, Craig and Leon with me again for their chances for today. So I'll start with you this time, Craig. What, you, what have you got on day two that you like to look off? Not so many races today. Um, I like mine in the Ryanair. I've had some good luck in the past in the Ryanair, and I like my uh, Zamoranda. Um, run a very good race first time out, uh, finishing third, I think it was, in a grade one. Uh, uh, no, fourth, sorry, and then a third. And then uh, one off a massive weight in a handicap. And just, I don't know what happened last week, to be honest. It was a, yeah, funny old race. But, uh, yeah, I think he'll be prime for this one. She, sorry. 
That's good. Are you going in that, Leon? Um, my, my best chance is actually in the, the trial house. Um, I've got that game red. It's Tintin red, or I mean, I don't even know how to pronounce myself, but I think that'll win. Um, the extra fur will really suit, and uh, it doesn't have any penalties or anything, so that that will probably be my best chance. Uh, I've got some other really good chances. I mean, the world hurdle, uh, night and day is... It's like a class horse, and she it, it'll be she'll be staying on at the end. Um, so she might arrive really late. And hopefully she'll she'll be right there. Ryanair Mashingoides must have a chance. It's a correct trip for the first time, so um, I'm expecting a big run from from her, from him. Footprints normally arrives too late, but they might have a chance. Volcanic eruption, I think, has got a huge chance in the Golden Mina. I, mean, I really like that as well. And and Shogun should have some chance in the in the bumper actually. Um, it is in the team because of that. So I thought I thought I'd, I'd have a bump horse that could also hurdle or, or jump chaser. So he's that. So he must have a chance there. So it, it might be a good day. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's quite a small field for that bumper, isn't it? This year, it's only about six or seven, isn't it? I think. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's worth my, my second choice hurdler and second choice chaser novices. I normally can can run in the bumpers as well um, and they've done well enough I've picked up quite a few so uh, he, should, he should he should go really well in that but yeah Tintin Brado is my, my best chance definitely okay that's good so what else have you got Craig anything else apart from the one in the right here um, I quite like mine in the uh, stairs as well I think he he started off the season really well looked really promising your minor implication I think he'll definitely be in the first three well I hope so anyway he just loves Cheltenham I think you know a lot of trainers you know specifically you know train for Cheltenham and that's where they do all the trials but my lot seems to really love it as well like really really love it so we'll see and the ground looks really good for it as well this time around so the other races um, yeah I yeah the bad horses <laughs> they are I'm not gonna lie uh, yeah I usually have a national one flat runner as well but not this season I just just yeah um, in the trials when we had him Leon just blew us all away and I thought no I'll leave that leave that area to him that's fine <laughs> not nothing uh, yeah no I've not got many runners on day two to be honest no it's there's, there's, just there's, the car. Yeah, there's not as many races yeah, on day really two is there because we got we got the few hunter chases tucked in from somewhere else at the end at the end of the day so I think there's probably only about eight or nine races on, on, on day two as opposed to twelve on, on day one so uh, it won't be quite as busy Go back to that um, that national hunt flat race it's it, it's funny because i mean i do commentating on the flat and and the jumps but me and Stu every, every week neither of us want to commentate on a bumper it's just difficult to get excited about it they're, they're better now than they used to be in so 6 they were so boring but they, they seem to be a bit better now but i'm just yeah just they, getting you, me onto you the don't need a, of... you don't need a sprint mile anymore yeah. um, that's, that, that's, right, yeah. that's that's the one big difference yeah, yeah the, the, show, show got sort of sprint mile it's a, it's a 12 foot on horse yeah. right so you, you you definitely don't i mean before when they had the other version you need a miler or a sprinter yeah, probably I mean, a sprinter that was it everybody just used to put in a just used to put in the sort of sprinter that didn't make the flat team put it in as a as a national run it was the same horses yeah, racing it's the same horses every week which is getting a bit, you, a bit you can't dull. you can't do that anymore because i think in so 7 their jumping improves uh, the more you run them in the game mm, it does so if you don't if you don't um if you don't run them in the game and you try to use your flat horses to do the jumps, the the jumping tends to be not that great. Yeah. So yeah, I figured that out. Uh, the more the more jump starts to have, the better the jumping becomes. Obviously, that's a flat race, so it doesn't make a difference. But yeah, it's still yeah, it, it, it does it does make a difference how how they de- develop this time. Because I know in, in SO six, a lot of people said they didn't bother racing their horses at all. They just bred them and trolled them, and that, and that was it. You can't you can't do you can't do that now. No, you can't. Uh, it, not, 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 not for national hunt. You, you've got to run them because uh, unless you train like Josh and then do a sort of a manual training, but even then you've got to run them as well. But yeah, if you don't run them, they they jump in. It's really poor. I mean, I've done lo- watched lo- loads of jockey cams, and it's amazing how much the horse improves over ages. So, so yeah, that's good. So that gets Important me on to run. Gets me on to the sort of other subject for for today that I'll ask you about. What's 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 both of your backgrounds in? to the real horse racing because I remember talking to one or two trainers when we did this a few years ago and some of them said well I don't really like horse racing at all we just like this game and it's, it's good and then other people are really heavily into their racing like sort of Paul Rhodes and Gray and me what, 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 what about you what about you what's your background with, with horse racing how did you get into it uh, pretty much 
from a young age, um, betting on the Grand National. Um, my father and granddad used to always, you know, get the paper on the Saturday morning of the grandkids round, and we always used to have like a 50p, 10p, 20p bet on it, and pick like two or three horses out each, and it's just progressed from there. And I've been going to Cheltenham for probably 15, 15, 16 years. I usually fly back, um, fly back home specifically for, for Cheltenham Festival. And it gives me an excuse to go and see some of the friends and family as well. But it's predominantly, I'm going for Cheltenham. It's my favourite event um, out of anything. It really is. I just love it. The amphitheatre is just amazing there. Well, have it you really noticed is. a difference, though, in the last sort of like 10 years or so? Whereas it, whereas it, year, I, mean, I don't go over it as often now as I used to because years ago it used to be 75, 90% people who had gone for the horse races and that's what they'd gone for. As time has gone on, you're getting all these people now who are just going because it's something to tick off a list to say they've been to and it's like it's like a, a, a sort of day out more than a day at the races. Have you noticed that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You still seem to see the purists there. Yeah, but I just think it's just like a lot of young people now as well. It's like a statement to say that they've been to, you know, Cheltenham That's Festival. Right. I mean, I was, on the, I was on the train going there about... How many years ago am I talking there? Probably about three or four years ago. And I was sat on a train and there was a table of four women sat sort of just opposite the other side of the, tr- other side of the train thing, if you know what I mean. And they got... It was about, I don't know, half ten in the morning. They got their bottle of Prosecco out already. They'd all got their fancy shoes and everything on. And they're talking away. And this one woman said to somebody else about something. And she said, what do you, what, what do you, what do you mean? She said, well... Are you having any bets? She said, what do you mean, bets? And she said, have you got some money for betting? And she didn't know it was a horse race meeting she was going to. <laughs> she said, oh, you mean it's horses? Yeah. I didn't realise it was horses. Will we get to see them? And, and I thought, <laughs> they're actually on the train, on the way there, and they don't realise they're going to horse racing. And that, that's sad yeah. how it's become, really, a, a lot of the time. It's, 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 it's just sad, I think, that a lot of people that want to go can't go because they can't get in or they can't get decent pitch because he's taken up by people that don't really want to be there i love the new set out that they've done over the past few years mm. how they've basically modernized it so it's a lot more free-flowing but it just gets so crammed gold cup day is just insane um i've never seen crowds like it just seen like sardines pretty much yeah really that, is. that's that's what puts me off I, i'm not just not a fan of big crowds so i mean i, I prefer to go to races when they you know there's not that many people no, uh, that's, that's, that's right. I, mean, I always, always say to people, if you want to get into racing and find out what it's really like, don't go on a Saturday and don't go to these big meetings. Go to the little sort of meetings. I, 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 again, I yeah, tell you a story. That's, I've got a, a, that's, a mate that's, more my, that's more my thing. Yeah. So I prefer to go when there's you know that, that many people at the races. That's, that's what I enjoy more. Yeah, I've, I've got a mate years ago, he said to me, go on, go to horse racing. I've never been horse racing. And I said, okay. And he was like a boisterous Welsh chap. You probably know about them, Leon, living where you do. And he wanted to really find out all about it. So we're on the train. We're only going to Warwick. And we're on the train to go to Warwick. It's only going to take about 25 minutes to get in. I've got him a racing post. And I'm teaching him how to do the form and telling him what's what. And he's like picking up his going, well, What's going to win that? Like, no, no, you, you pick it and you decide what you think. And then I'll tell you if you're getting it about right. And by the time we get to the third race, he's an expert. And he knows exactly what's what. And we're standing around a paddock. And... I said to him, I'm just going to nip off to the toilet. I'll be back in a minute. You sort of, I'll see you back here. Now, he's one of these people that always has to talk to everybody. I come back from the toilet. And this is a perfectly true story. And he is leaning on the paddock rail talking to Nicky Henderson. And he is explaining to Nicky Henderson why his horse won't win the race and why it won't go on the going and it's got no chance of winning. He doesn't, I haven't got a clue who he is, by the way. Of course, you know what Nicky Henderson's like. He's just chatting away to him, perfectly happy. And then he wishes, oh, okay, I've got to go now. And off he went. And when he went, he zinked to him and he went, oh, he was a nice chap. I said, do you know who he is? And he went, no. And I went, probably the best trainer we've got at the moment. And he said, oh, I'll just tell him why that horse won't win well that's his horse and it probably will win <laughs> but it was, you couldn't do that at John, could you? you could do that at a little little track like Warwick which is good where they, everybody all mixes in together it's it's uh it was good yeah i i usually fly out to uh, melman cup as well i really enjoy that um that event it's uh, it's a really good spec um it, well yeah it's a really good race and it's a fun day out and there were one uh, they do like a parade ring there so they get all these fancy cars like all the same 1960s or something cars and it's got all the jockeys and trainers and i think it was three like three years ago i managed to speak to willie mullins 
Um, he had two uh, rich, rich horses running. I, f- I forgot the names now, and he is a really nice bloke. Really, really is. Mm. Like, he just took time out about like a couple of minutes to chat with me, and I got a good photo with him as well. It was uh, yeah, I was quite happy with that because he's my favourite uh, jumps trainer. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's awesome. awesome. He's good. So what about you, Leon? And how did you get into racing? Is it- that was that back in uh, South I've, Africa? I've been racing since I was about seven or eight years old, actually. Yeah. And my dad, my dad got me into racing, so yeah, so I've been in for a long time. Uh, in South Africa, I used to go to the Chain Bee Met every year. That's that's one of the biggest races in Cape Town. So it's a Kenilworth. There's probably about twenty or thirty thousand people there. So yeah, uh, no, I, I got into jumps racing when I came to the UK. I found it more enjoyable. The horses st- stick around for longer as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. flat horses seem to retire really yeah. quickly in the UK. Uh, they don't don't so much in in South Africa, but in the UK, they, you know, after three, a lot of them retire. You know, at the most four. There's a few exceptions, but in National Hunt, at least they carry on for a long time. Yeah. So when when you're both playing the, the playing the game, then do you sort of use your knowledge of real racing and, and go what I call like the proper routes? Like if you've got a horse that you think might win the Guineas, do you run it in a Craven and uh, do you sort of like run you sort of uh if you've got a horse in a derby you stick it in one of the derby trials do you do it sort of like that realistically going as, as though it was a real thing or do you just no i've got like a, a set sort of routine i follow so i enter my horses on certain days of the year otherwise i mean i've got like 500 horses in my stable like, that's the only way i can do it so no i can't i don't follow the sort of set routine right okay. it's just uh yeah the, 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 some of the horses don't they, they, they I mean, a lot of people would sort of run the horse in the Dante, then the Derby or something like that. But, uh, yeah, the horses don't seem to uh, translate, they don't run so well over different distances in there, so it's mm. always been the case. So. Oh, I don't know. They, they, they seem to be doing it a little bit more in seven than they did in than they did in six. I've found that I've had horses that have got won the guineas and then gone and won the Derby, which didn't, didn't really happen a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, I've... I've they, they've got to be really good when they do that. I mean, I've only had a f- one or two that have you know, done that, but yeah, not not that many. Okay, what about so, you, Greg? Do you sort of follow a set path or do you just... No, no, not anymore, no. Um, I follow a set routine over over the jumps. Um, I go down the Supreme Champion Hurdle and then do the Arkle and uh, Champion Chase routes with the uh, novices. Um, yeah, but not uh, not on the fly anymore. No. Okay, so we, we no, expect to see you. We expect to see you to bring lots of the national horses back then for more than one season when, when we move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'll have I'll have a few come back. G.I. Joe's coming back. I think definitely. Um, yeah. Lateral thinking maybe. I, I, I have a few. Yeah, it's, um, I, I think it's good yeah, when, we, when we do that. If we if we could find a way to sort of encourage more people to bring more horses back, I think it, it, it's good the way it builds up over time. Where you, I'd like to see something come and win the Triumph Hurdle this year and then go and win the Champion Hurdle next year. I mean, I'm just, I've done that actually. Have you? I, I've won. Yeah, um, I the horse called oh, I can't remember now, Paradiso or something. I, I did that. I won the Triumph and then came back and I won the Champion Hurdle with it. Yeah. So yeah, I've done it before. Rough weather will unfortunately they're not that good at five. Otherwise I'd bring rough weather back because it's really good at six and seven. But they tend not to be really good at five in SO seven. There's you know really I mean mine aren't mine aren't anyway. They none of them are yeah, anywhere just, near good. I have to put them in a separate trials, um, when I run my trials because they just can't compete with anything six and above. So we'll uh, we'll look forward to a good a good day today. So best of luck to both of you on day two and uh I'll speak to you again tomorrow for day two at the Cheltenham Festival. It's a very quiet day for us here at Leedham Towers. We've only got two runners all day. And we've got Montparnasse Redwood going first of all in the Fred Winter Juvenile Handicap Hurdle. And Montparnasse Redwood won well last week. So we're quite hopeful that uh, we might get a decent run from that one. And we're even more hopeful for the fact that the weights have worked out quite nicely for us here. We're rated 90 and the top one is rated 108. So we're getting... 28 from the top weight aren't we so we're only running off pretty much bottom weight not going to give too much weight away and it doesn't look like too spectacular a field either we've also got a really good record in this race because we've won it for the last two seasons which is something I didn't realise when I put the entries in to be honest so Lady Lilith took it for us last season um, off bottom weight and the season before that St Domingo did exactly the same thing so we'll be hoping 
that Montparnasse Redwood can make it three out of three. Our second runner of the day is in the Kim Muir Challenge Handicap Cup Chase, which is a 0 to 140 handicap. Pity it wasn't a little bit of a lower grade handicap, but to be fair, the, hot, the top rated horse is only one, two, three, so it's not that bad. And we've got plainly dangerous in this, which is rated 91. So again, it's going to be running off pretty much bottom weight. It was one that we put in as an outside chance to be a gold cup horse, we thought, but it's really been disappointing to be honest and has never looked like doing a great deal. It managed to finish third in the HLB handicap over three miles a couple of weeks ago and was running on quite nicely at the end. It was disappointing in a roll of Merrick the week before that. It ran well in reasonably well in the Betfred listed chase to finish fifth. It's best run though of the season so far has probably been in the Munster National back in week three. It uh, finished second over three miles and was staying on at the end. So it's it's not a forlorn hope that we can get into the money with this one. So we've only got two runners, as I said, on day two, but both have got reasonable each way chances, so we've got to be pretty optimistic about that. Three more races still to look at then on day two of the Cheltenham Festival. And the first one of those is the Champion Bumper, the National Hunt Flat Race. A very small field for this this season, although quite a few of the top trainers are represented. Looking at the form for these, it's, it's difficult to figure out what you think might sort of win. Leon seems to really fancy his Shogun, and that one is an obvious one to choose, but Casimir's for Darren Thompson has also won twice out of the last four, and she's electric for Derek Hinton when it came into the stable was really good. Tiger Moth as well was really good early on in the season so just a case of which ones have improved and which ones are showing the best sort of form it's very easy to be led and swayed towards the Leon van Rensburg horse Shogun and it's a bit of a surprise to see no Joshua Sutherland horse in this. You can't rule out Paul Rhodes though in these national and flat races but Tiger Moth has been disappointed he's looking quite dominant early on in the season Will she's electric come back to form Will Casimir's run up to form as well that one certainly the best over hurdles it's a wide open race but i think if i was forced to go for one i'd probably be tempted to go for casimir's as that one looked like it could have had a chance in one of the hurdle races and darren must have sent it to this race for some reason the per temps network final handicap hurdle is race 16 and this race you needed to qualify through one of the qualifying races earlier on in the season so that's why there's a small field because not quite so many people have qualified and obviously some of the qualifiers may have decided not to take part in the race the top rated horse is Cal Martel Lilly for David Robertson and David Robertson's always to be feared at Cheltenham John Morgan has also got one in this which is probably a little bit of a surprise as we're not known for his handicappers but Kersil has got a decent he's off, running off a decent sort of mark and he wouldn't count that one out looking down the list Haddad for Vinnie Gerard could be interested Vinnie in his first season as a jump trainer has had lots of success on the flat over the years he'll be trying to convert that form into jumps form Western Junction for Darren Thompson is a previous winner as well and Paul Rhodes down into the handicaps this season not really fine with the big boys over jumps yet but I'm sure he'll be back up there next season always going to look out for one of his inner handicap but I'm just going to fall down on the side of Monte Cassino for Paul Fisk who quite often seems to be there or thereabouts so or doesn't quite go through with it and today might just be his day the final race that we need to look at is a mayor's novices hurdle it's the troll house stud mayor's novices hurdle and we've already heard that james shea particularly fantasies sabratha lady in this that one does look to have some particularly good form but also the big easy for joshua sutherland he's not necessarily written that one off and um, leon van rensburg seems to think that tintern brader is probably the best game bred horse he's ever had throw into the mix there you've got yes hollywood for derek hinton which is a winner two races ago and those four look to be the four to focus on with Salanches and Sonny Made Fiction for Thomas Rogers and Bill Bill Lilly for Ryan Costello not like quite looking up to the grade it's difficult to know what to come down on the side of here but Tintern Brainer has run particularly well but James Shea seemed particularly keen on Sir Ratha Lady and I'll be selecting that one to try and slip the field so that's the rest of the races then for day two Oh, once again, our roving reporter Stu is brave in the elements and he's out on the course early morning with the horses and all the people around checking up on the going and the weather and giving us a report right from the course. Well, here I am down on the course today after a fantastic day's racing yesterday. No less than seven different winners for the 12 races of Day 1 Festival. 
big round of applause for Paul O'Neill picking up two of the festival winners. New train up, having a cracking first day. Well, as I said yesterday, the ground's dried out. We can officially say it's good ground today. The weather's good again. There's a slight breeze coming in from the north. Sun's shining again this morning. There's plenty of horses here out in the gallops. There is a possible chance of some showers later in the day. But they think the wind may well pick up and move those clouds off. There might be some rain this evening, which uh, may affect the ground here, but it's pretty dry. The forecast again tomorrow is uh, sunshine. So as we see a few horses coming towards us here off the gallops, I can see the very impressive Einzer Sobrabre for Darren Thompson. Looking very fit. Big, big, big horse this. Um, goes in the Ryanair. Has a great chance. Another couple coming towards me now. There's, uh, I can see front by the middle of Tam Kings. Lovely looking horse build. I mean, Tam winning one yesterday will be well impressed with a very small national hunt stable this year. And the other one I can see now coming just towards me is Starbet Mona. She's having a little bit of a moan as she winds away. And that also goes in the Ryanair chase a little bit later. So good luck to everybody today. And I'll hand you back to the studio. Well, a great insight from Stu there again down on the course and he'll be back commentating on the first race today the Fred Winter Juvenile Hurdle and we'll leave you today with just a little bit of insight of how sometimes things don't go exactly as they're supposed to when we're recording this programme Say what you see, it's good but it's not right Yeah Doug probably don't know what Nine that means but anyway there you go Running in the pack and two in the red no, What was that? That was bullseye uh, yeah. Out of, the black and into, out of the black and into the red, nothing in this game for two in a bed. I knew you'd do it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that was a brilliant game show, Doug, that we had in England, which was based on darts and very poor general knowledge. And basically, some bloke was a dart player and some bloke was supposed to be clever. And the dart player took darts at a special dart board with different colours and things, and then the questions got asked. And they'd be stupid questions like, oh, this is spelling. Can you spell cat and then they'd like win 100 quid and it'd be like what year did england win the world cup 1966 1832 or 1412 and, and really dumb questions and and then they'd go on at the end and they'd win all these silly prizes and they'd have to gamble it for the star prize now because it was based on darts which is basically a working man's game in england really in the pub it was almost always a couple of 40 50 year old blokes with beer bellies and stuff who probably lived in a terraced house in the middle of a city or a block of flats or something and every time they won the, the prize was a speedboat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there must be about 500 people in Wigan who've got a speedboat who are just hoping that there'll be a massive big flood one day and they can actually get to use the speedboat they won on Bullseye and whenever they didn't win it was something useful like a car but whenever they won it was a speedboat you know what it would have done that after the show they would have said look we'll give you 500 for the boat <laughs> we'll give you 500 quid for the boat alright no, and don't 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 spoil it. Re, don't spoil it. We've all been thinking. Repaint up for each show. We've all been thinking. Every time you see a tower block now in every city, there's like parking bays for cars, motorbikes, and a speedboat, just in case anyone wins <laughs> it. I only ever won something once, which was uh, the movie Black Hole. Was it Black Hole? Yeah, I think it was. Max Max von Sydow. Was it called the Black Hole? I think it was. And it, I won the album of Nestle condensed milk. You had to write a catchphrase, you know, in no more than oh 15 God. words. And I put in, I would take Nestle's condensed milk with me to the moon, I think it was, um, just in case I came across any aliens, I could just give them my milk and they would be friends with me. I was about nine. I oh, I thought you were this, this time last year or something. <laughs> no, it was when the film Black Hole came out with Max one side out. He didn't try it. There you go. You didn't win that caravan on a game show, did you, Ray? No, my wife bought this. <laughs> she bought you a caravan oh, to get you out of the house. It's a strange thing to say. My wife bought you. What what's that? <laughs> oh, oh, we bought that. <laughs> no. Well, I suppose we did buy it, but I didn't want it. She did. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get to go away in a much? No, it's, it's, no it's, it's an old one, though. It's just in the back garden for the, for, the, for, the, for the son to play for de in a den, like, you know. 
Oh, I use it, and he, com- he comes out German, goes on the computer and all. Good, good mm-hmm. little escape pod. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We bought off somebody who was in Stonehenge, up uh, lost Stonehenge, <laughs> in Glastonbury. Oh, okay. And, they, and they, they popped, and they brought it up here when they were finished with it on the way home. Oh, blimey. Yeah, the Australians used to do that in London when I was younger. My dad bought a camper back. The Australians used to come out and then try and sell off after driving. I don't know how they drove from Australia and camper then, but they were all Australians. But they would then sell off their vans under London Bridge to try and get the money for the flight home. It makes yeah, go okay. on. <laughs> that was all good. <laughs> What's happening day two? Have we done day two? No, I was just, I'm just waiting for everybody to start sort of talking about horses rather than caravans and... Well, uh, take control of the show, oh, man. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's down, <laughs> okay, here's the Ryanair, first of all. What number's that? 17. Thank you, Steel. <clears throat> You're welcome. Oh, I got two horses in that one. 